All right, let's get some sway bar links off. Go ahead and get after the track bar. And again, axle shift is normal. That's what holds it all together. Okay, so before we start drooping the axle at all, taking shocks out and all that stuff, I wanna go through and look at any hangups we may have, i.e. Uh, this locker, I believe it's a locker light here. Yeah, that's your locker wire there. Um, when we add those new shocks on, this is gonna get yanked on. So this is gonna have to be um, removed, the tab anyway. Um, brake lines obviously are getting changed out. Uh, what else do we have? I'll keep an eye on this line here to see how much that droops. And we may have to undo the little loop there just to give a little bit of room so it can come down to full droop. Uh, sway bars out of the way already. So we just gotta do brake lines, shocks, springs. Uh, that's about it. So anyway, make sure we're looking for all those things that can get hung up. <laughs> so the the torque spec for this is 23 um, so I'll put it to that and if it still leaks then I'll tighten it until it stops
All right, let's get some upper control arms out. Get springs in. Make sure that you index your isolators for the way they were. It should wear the same. All right, with the springs in. Get this bracket attached.
parts. So we got that done. I'm gonna, uh, I'm gonna take a break and then I'll get back after this a little bit. So looking at your connections back here, and it appears that uh, Jeep plans for people to lift these things. Everything I've seen, they've had an extra loop of uh, wire in there. So when you go to lift it, things aren't having to get rewired. So you can just take a hammer and pop these out. And then once that happens, that'll give you a lot more play in that wire. However, this one here is still going to be on the tight side when you're going to droop. So you have to disconnect this one regardless. But when I go to put everything back together, I'll leave this one uh, off. I'll put another uh, zip tie in there a little bit looser, but I won't connect that until my, my shocks are completely hooked up. So I'm not worried about pulling that out of its socket and breaking everything. So now with the shocks reinstalled, I'll lower it to the ground, use my floor jacks to cycle the suspension all the way up to full bump. Okay, with the springs out, the shocks hooked up, the axle pushed to full bump. Now understand that this little jounce bumper doesn't play a part in that. That's not even touching right now. Um, the shocks bottomed out before it got to that. So what I do now is I take a measurement from here and that'll tell me that I need three inches of bump stop extension. Technically, I only need two and a half inches of bump stop extension, but because Metal Cloak makes their bump stop pucks in one inch increments, I'll have to bump for the higher level, which will be three inches. Now I know this customer is going to 35 inch tires, and that would require uh, rechecking the bump stop extension anyway, which would probably put it at three inches. So we're just gonna install three inches of bump stop and uh, get this thing all set. Okay, now that I have the shocks installed, I just checked for bump stops. I wanna get back to the uh, rear track bar relocation bracket and go into a little more detail on this so you guys understand things. The bracket itself, will attach to the lower control arm uh, mounting point, so the bolt goes through that. Inside this hole here, you have a spacer that you have to install. So this little thing right here is a spacer, so that way this wall doesn't collapse and it stays nice and strong. You have a U-bolt here that comes up from the bottom. Just get these started finger tight, so you wanna get all your hardware installed and leave it all loose until you get it all connected with the exception of the sway bar. And then Metal Cloak provides a uh, bolt that they want you to use to go through here. So the stock bolt was this. Metal Cloak wants you to use the supplied hardware. So that's what we're gonna do next. Get this installed and again, finger tight. Now understand that the nut they provide here that's a Stover nut. You see the three little triangles on it and the uh, bolt is slightly uh, oblong. This is designed to clamp on to the, I'm sorry, not the bolt, the nut. It's designed to clamp on to the bolt. The downside of this versus the stock hardware is that the stock hardware has a flag nut and I, I really like flag nuts in this situation because makes it easier to see what's going on, get it on there, and then you don't even have to mess with it. It holds itself in place. I can't get this thing started. Come on. All you gotta do is start, there you go. All right, so we have that there. Now that we have everything in place, we can tighten it down uh, nice and firm and get it to uh, where it needs to be. Don't forget your bolt on your control arm still needs to be torqued to spec, and I'll verify if these have any particular torque needs. Probably what the stock uh, track bar bolt was, 
And then these here, I'm sure you get them nice and snug and we'll be good. They're serrated on the back side of these, uh, these washers so they'll hold in place just fine. Okay, I'm gonna disconnect the shocks. I'm gonna lower the axle, get the springs reinstalled. Then we'll move on to the bump stop extension and then the sway bar links. All right, you'll see we got the sway bar links installed. Um, I went and kind of cleaned up some of the electrical stuff, cut off the uh, clips that I had to remove anyway, so that's all cleaned up. So now I'm going to install the track bar. Metal cloak gives you a predetermined measurement, um, which is fine as a starting point but the track bar goes in like so. And on the driver's side, the hex button bolt goes here. And on the back side, we have another one of those um, nuts that are deformed, which will help them hold on to this. So it goes there. Close this is. Ouch. Not bad at all. Right on the money. So that goes there. Now we just got have to put it on the ground before we tighten it to spec. So now I'll reconnect my, uh, my locker line. I'll double check everything. We're ready to get it on the ground and start torquing everything down. You know, one last thing you have to pay attention to as well is that your axle has a breather tube and the stock breather tube will come about that close to actually connecting. So I'm gonna have to relocate their breather tube. Um, I actually have one from a TJ that's a longer hose than this because I'd rather keep that uh, breather up high and out of the water. So uh, we'll have to take care of that as well. With the Jeep on the ground, it's time to torque everything down to spec. Okay, the suspension is complete. I have everything tightened down. Everything uh, is torqued to spec. Um, what I do when I torque stuff, and it's a good habit, is to go around and put a line from the nut to wherever. So like on the jam nuts, same thing. And then it's easy. At a glance, you can look and say, okay, I know that that is tight. It's not coming loose. So if you have a, a wobble or something going on, you can go around and pretty quickly tell if anything is loose. And I make them where they're easy to see. So obviously the uh, track bar in the front, I can see it there nice and easy. Upper uh, track bar mount right there. So do that all the way around to all of your fasteners and it makes it really easy to um, tell if things are, are staying tight or not. Um, the only thing I have left to do now besides put the wheels on is I have to bleed the brakes and she'll be all done. All right, she's under her own weight. That is the uh, Metal Cloak three and a half inch Game Changer Suspension Rock Sport Edition.